And we're back with another episode of That Figure Skating Show. Today we have a very special surprise, a very special guest, the one and only, the superstar choreographer, Sandra Bezek. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us. Hi. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be here. So, uh, so sure. nice to see you again after seeing you, you know, so many days in a row on Battle of the Blades. And now all of a sudden you're gone from our lives. But even on battle, it was like this. It's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked to each were... other. We saw each other, but in person, like once a week or a couple times a week. So, Sandra, we're we're so excited to have you on the show. Uh, obviously, so nice to catch up, but also so nice to pick your brain a bit and talk to you about some of your, um, you know, your iconic programs you've choreographed. Mm -hmm. Legendary work, obviously, including myself. <laughs> the most like iconic program. programs of your career, for sure. Um, but, you know, we, we narrowed it down to a few that we wanted to uh, talk about. Um, the first one uh, would be Terry Lipinski's Free um, from 98. We don't believe Tara knows what Quan has done. She doesn't usually watch the skaters ahead of her. Talk to us a little bit about that experience and, um, you know, working with her. She was a young phenom. She won the Olympic gold. Was she the youngest ever to win? That yes. Event? Yes, she was the youngest. Yeah, she, ever. Was. she was very, very special because although she was so young, I started working with her, I think when she was 14, it was just the year before the Olympics and then the Olympics. Um, and what I found so extraordinary about her was that she, absolutely knew what she wanted she absolutely knew not only what she wanted as a goal when worlds win the olympics but also she knew what she needed to feel in the programs to get there and so in in this strange kind of way this 14 15 year old led the process because she was very definitive of what felt comfortable to her what didn't work for her. She was very particular about the music. Um, and, and I had a huge amount of respect for that because it was like, okay, this is your path, your dream, your path. I'll do everything I can to help you um, make these decisions. But she, she was actually the decision maker in, in many ways. I took away from that too, a bit of a lesson in that um, I mean, it was such an example of ownership, you know, of, of being in control of, of your own destiny. And then when she got to the Olympics, she did something else that I thought was really exceptional. And, if, and maybe because of her age, but maybe just because of the way she was or is, is that she, um, she held, she was really present in every single practice. She was excited and happy and kind of looking around going oh my goodness there's you know scott hamilton there's cat like she was awed by being at the olympics and so joyous and that was her entire experience and it, it was um i think a lot of us who observed that really took away a lot from that as as a as a life lesson in a way i think it's really cool and interesting uh to hear about how like, you know, mature she was for her age. Like, I think, you know, as, as a choreographer, when you get someone who's 14, 15, it's like you're trying to completely, utterly mold them. Sometimes they're malleable, sometimes they're not. Yeah. But it's really interesting that you say that because when you, when I look back at her programs and see her, her skating ability, like her reach of her lines, her attention to detail, mm -hmm. that, um, that really, that makes a lot of sense. And with her being so young, but also being so, um, not adamant, but knowing what she wants to do. How did, yeah, how, do you, how did you kind of uh, like meld those two worlds together? Because, you know, often with skating, like, yes, she still looks young, but she is mature for her age. And how do you, right. what kind of piece of music? Like, well, uh, well, the the piece of music was was Rainbow, and 
And we chose it because it was so joyous. And we, you know, devised a whole story around, around the choreography. She actually, I just spoke with her last week and she, she was reminding me a little bit of it. I had kind of, you know, forgotten the details, but I think, I think what I very consciously tried to do was celebrate her youth as opposed to try to pretend that she was something she was not. She was never going to be a mature performer. She was a mature jumper. But her joyousness, um, her, her effervescence, I wanted, I wanted to showcase. And so, you know, in, in, in many ways, and I think, you know, Dylan, you, you know this about me, I sort of try to step away from being in front of the skater. I want I wanted, I wanted it to look like, um, I wanted it to look like she choreographed it herself, like she was playing outside on you know an open ice surface and just playing and just skating for for the passion of it um because that that joy was um so compelling it gets so lost in our world and it's actually something that's kind of coming back in a way with everybody um you know posting footage of of themselves skating outdoors it's like yeah this is what skating's all about. So those are the, that's what I tried to capture, but also then showcase her, her technical ability, but not pretend that she was anything that she wasn't. She didn't need to be. She's 15. I mean, it's different now with all the girls, you know, who are 15 and plotting yeah. like crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a different, it's a diff, it's a different sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna say with the resurgence of these young phenoms, yeah. In, in the, you know, women's event, the girls event again. Yeah. When you look back at what Tara did. Yeah. You see that, that vibrance and the way she performed mm -hmm. and that, you know, um, just freedom in her presentation. Yes. Whereas the, it is becoming like a bit of a jump competition and there is some artistry, but there's not the same yet at least some of these it's, girls i haven't seen them step out on the ice and own the moment the way tara kind of just took up the whole rink it, it the the artistry is imposed and um and and often they're purely for the check marks so that on paper it it um it can garner whatever marks it needs to garner but i think that um, I mean, these, these girls are all, I mean, think about it. They're these, you know, these precious lives. I mean, there's a price to pay for when you're a phenom at such an early age, and then you can be cast aside within a couple of years and, um, and you know, next. And I, my heart breaks for a lot of them because they're going, it's also during a time that's very difficult for women, for girls to go through and so i really think that it that coaches and choreographers um one of their jobs one of their primary jobs is to nurture um their hearts their skaters hearts and i'm i'm not you know it's it, i don't want to um critique from a distance i don't know what it's like at the rink but it just seems from a distance to be so competitive now and everybody seems to be a little bit replaceable. And that, that's a little, that's very scary to me. I don't want to read into what may or may not be there. I think the technical developments are incredible. I mean, that's our sport, right? Everybody just keeps trying to do more and more and more. You know, back in the day, it was like, how many triples can people do? Now it's how many quads can people do? I hope that there's more and not just that, not just, how quickly you can rotate <laughs> either on the ice or up in the air it just seems like everybody's just rotating <laughs> just <have> to skate <laughs> well it kind of takes away half of what the sport is about right and the well, thing that makes skating so unique and beautiful is that yeah. we 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 are an art form or a performance art as well as a sport right so which makes yes. it controversial but yeah and i think just a sense of flight Nobody, no other sport has that sense of flight. You know, dancers try and, and um, but we have it. And I, I just never want to lose that. 
us and ski jumpers. Yeah, well, <laughs> but then we get to be pretty. <laughs> Although they're beautiful. I, I, I mean, have you watched ski jumping yeah, it's person? yeah. at the Olympics? Yeah, it's, in, it's they're gorgeous. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have nice lines. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about like, you know, someone who really showcases their love for skating every time they're on the ice. Uh, let's talk Kurt Browning. Um, mm -hmm. You yeah. know, he inspires so many people when he, whether he's a clown, whether he's doing Casablanca, or whether he's, um, you know, still skating on Stars on Ice or yeah. Battle of Blades. And, and can you talk about, you know, working with him back mm -hmm. then, or specifically uh, the Casablanca free? Casablanca came at a, a really interesting time because he had already been three-time world champion. He was kind of burnt out. You know, he, had, he was like, I've done it. I've just done it. I know I'm supposed to love going to the rink, but he was struggling. And, and I, I think that, you know, he would, he would admit that now. I mean, not, not overtly, but there was an undertone of just, right, he was such so charismatic that everybody wanted a piece of him from a very young age right and and you know you just he needed to be filled up we had already done a television special together where um tall in the saddle where um he had the opportunity to kind of you know play some characters and ride his horse be a cowboy and kind of play around like that and so um, the idea of working with a character was, um, was I think, interesting to him. I mean, he, I think that's the beauty of figure skating, too, is that you can, you know, at one age, want to be the first man to land the quad, and then you can transform into the artist he is today. I mean, he's, he's been everything in his career, and that's also something that any figure skater can do because it's, so, it's such a process and it's such an evolution. But at that point, um, I think we both were interested in exploring a character, something. So the, the triple axel bored him. He needed something before and after the triple axel to motivate him to do the triple axel, right? Because he had already done so many. Mary Jane Stong actually came up with the idea, and she's come up with so many extraordinary ideas. She's one of the you know unsung heroes of. Canadian skating, her big ideas, you know, and generous ideas. And she gave me the music. She, she suggested um, Casablanca because she sort of thought Kurt looked a little like Bogey. And then I went off and edited the piece and Kurt and I played. I mean, that's the thing about Kurt. I mean, you both know Kurt. We, you play when you are on the ice with Kurt. <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, back in those days, he, um, everything came to him so easily. He didn't really have to think about his jumps. He didn't have to think about, uh, he just jumped. And then he'd think about the landing later, kind of, you know, and I'd always, you know, be yelling at him that, or, or you know, saying, please think about your landing before you go up in the air. At the point of Casablanca, things were becoming maybe not quite so easy. He had to start thinking about it. He was getting older. He had life experiences that that had made him, you know, a f more full human being. He had more to say, and so the thought process was now entering our process. Not just do 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 be physical. Now it was okay. Let's explore emotionally where this could go. And he started really enjoying. Um, breaking down the detail like you know how does a european hold a cigarette as opposed to a north american right i mean you know that was an hour's conversation on the ice it was like exactly you know how is he going to flick this cigarette um and all of those little things we we spent you know, hours on and he started really falling in love with that process and i think 
that's what you still see today is his fundamental love for the process. I mean, if we've got a program to do, it will take twice as long with Kurt because, <laughs> because he just loves to go back and break it down, back and break it down, back and break it down. And, you know, we just, like even the little pieces that we did for um, Battle this season, he took twice as long as they needed to take, but it's because, you know, they were, that's what we do. So that's a very long answer <laughs> about Kurt Browning. <laughs> well, it's fitting because you said he takes a really long time. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, but I love it. I mean, and, and it's so much fun to, to do that analysis, right? It's so much fun to get in there and, and, and be able to understand the subtle, the, the power of the subtlety. Um, at least it is for me. <laughs> Kurtz, he's what I mean. He's one of a kind. He's uh, yeah. he's, an he's a genius. He is. He is. Yeah. Uh, do you are there any skaters out there today that kind of are able to characterize the way he does? That that are able to hmm. you know really capture a moment the way Kurt does when he steps out on the ice. I mean, he can hit a pose and glide down the ice, and you're glued. Yeah. Do you? Do you, do you see that in anyone right now? I think Nathan Chen could. I, I did a show with him for Yuna in Korea with David, David um, Wilson and I made a show for Yuna. And it was the first time that I'd been on the ice with Nathan and watched him perform. And he's, he's, oof, oh my goodness. Um, because he's, he's got both sides of his brain. You know, he's got the, the, the mathematical, but then he can read an audience, he can sense an audience, he can know exactly what they want at the moment they want it. He could really um, develop into an extraordinary performer. I think Alaj is, um, has an extraordinary uh, talent too for, transforming himself. Um, I, I think that that's still untapped and will get develop as he continues to perform, but I, there isn't anything Elage can't do, I don't think. And I don't know about the women because they all look, they're, they're a lot alike. <laughs> <laughs> um, well played. <laughs> but, but I love them so, you know, and I just, when I watch them, I want to sort of zero into their eyes and see, you know, see what's under there. And I hope that they have that chance um, to express it. Uh, gosh, who would come to mind for you? Um, I like, he hasn't been around. I think he came back a little bit this year. Han Yan. I really like mm -hmm. his style as well. His style, his voice. Um, his uh, ability to just do like the the little things with the hands, like the subtle head looks, yeah. the, taking you in out of emotion, like the nuances, the subtleties. I, yeah. I really enjoy his skating. Mm -hmm. He's been injured a little bit, but I, I, I think he's uh, yeah. one of those who can really command an audience and command his his personality on the ice. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in Yuzu, for sure. I mean, he's such a rock star. What I lo love about Yuzu, is is that when he stands at the top of his program you know and he just commands it and like a rock star right he makes his entrance the top of his program is an entrance <laughs> and it's great and i think he's got extraordinary qualities too uh to develop into wherever he wants to go um yeah what about you dylan you know, I, personality. I loved watching Javi. I just, oh gosh, Javi almost had a little bit of a Kurt thing. You yes, know, he's just kind he of does. Fell in love with him when he skates, and um, there's something so authentic and genuine mm -hmm. about what he does. And yes, he, you almost like you get to know him during. Yes, his he he yes. Um, well, David and I did two uh, tours with Javi in Spain, and so we we had the opportunity to do 
different kinds of programs for him. And um, he worked with a partner and, and did some ice dancey Perry kind of stuff. And so, I mean, he can be anything too. He can be a leading man. He can be the goof. He can, he can be the passionate uh, lover. Um, he, and, and, and the, inter- I mean, we did all sorts of things with him, sort of, you know, very sort of reminiscent of the old stars on ice days when we had time, this was before you guys were born, <laughs> when we had time to actually make a show. Um, and we had so much fun in Spain doing this for him and, and choosing different, different, uh, ways of, 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 um, expression. So you're, you're absolutely right. Javi is very much like, like Kurt. And um, he's, he's, he's simpatico. You know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He gives, uh, he, he connects. Yeah. And we were, we were skating, we were, our shows, and, and, and David and I would actually do the tour with everybody, like six cities, whatever, six shows. Um, and they were packed, 20,000 people. Like, like Asia. I mean, it's just, it was so, and they knew nothing about skating and, and fell in love with it. And that's because of Javi. They came to see him and then they fell in love. Pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah. You revolutionize a sport in your own country. That's- yes. Yes. As Yuna did in Korea, Javi is doing it in Spain. And that's, that's pretty powerful. Speaking okay. of Canadians having an impact, um, Battle of the Bryans. Uh, we're not uh-huh. technically talking about a Canadian, but we're talking yeah. about the American Brian. Choreographing for a time in figure skating that was like we had uh, the Battle of the Carbons. We love our yeah. battles. And then we have the Battle of the Bryans, you know, uh, making a program Olympic year 98 for Brian Boitano with the backdrop of this rivalry, Canada versus the U.S., Brian versus Brian. Can we talk about the short program, Le Patineur? They had just decided that figures were going to be eliminated from competition. So I don't know if it was going to be the next year or two in two years or something after the Olympics, but I kind of wanted to make a conclusive sort of statement on skating, you know, sort of our roots to now figures are disappearing. Um, and so that's why I wanted to do something period. But then I also, I mean, Brian was very shy. And so the only way to get him to be sort of cocky as a performer was to give him a role. And so I thought the role of a, you know, show off um, would be fun for him as a, as a backdrop to all his unbelievable technical ability. I mean, there's nothing like standing on the ice with Brian as he's jumping and tearing around and just his power. And so I wanted to kind of showcase all that, contrast um, the free program, but uh, give a nod to our sport and kind of that, you know, century of skating that um, was coming to an end. So that's what that was about. I was gonna ask you. It was like because it's very uh, like cheeky, uh, you know. It's like it's like skating to like the skaters' waltz. Like yes. what is it? It's like going yeah. back to those those little origins. Okay, perfect. Uh, and um, you know they had these little cheeky moments, like the um, the landing of the triple axle, and then the blade wipe, yeah. like throw up in the air. Um, yeah, it's, it was it was cocky. It was just like look at me, and that is so not Brian. Um, as a human being, as a person, but under there, it's still there, you know, because there, there was a grandness to skating and it just, yeah. So that it, it was meant to be a show off, a skating show off like you would. And I, I was sort of thinking of, you know, Dick Button's era and, and skating outdoors and competing outdoors and kind of 
you know, or somebody you know, just taking center ice in the middle of a pond and kind of making everybody stop and watch him, you know, for his. <laughs> and, and do you think that's really important? Um, because I think what's so cool is that one, we're all human. So we all have these different things underneath us. Yes. And you can bring it out, even if yes. it's not your personality, out of into a program. And yeah. how, do, how important do you think that is to a development of a skater like Brian, especially? Mm -hmm. Massively important. I think, I think for whatever reason, up until that point, um, I think, I think the criticism that he was receiving was always, you know, you got to smile, you got to connect, you got to, you, you know, like you got to shimmy more, right? <laughs> he just wasn't that. Um, so we had to find other ways of, of connecting. And for me, it was, and you know, I just met him, like I didn't know him. And, and we had to figure this out in a matter of months, right? And make these decisions in, in months um, or days. And I just got a sense of his, um, his passion and his, his uh, drive and, and determination. Um, but he was also in private, very funny and very fun. And so Le Patineur was is sort of a little bit more a mix of that private guy with, you know, the show off. And Napoleon was a mix, was really his dream. It was really to showcase his dream to, and it, his dream wasn't to win. His dream was to skate as best as he could possibly skate at the moment that it mattered the most. And that's, um, that's what it was all for because he knew the wind was out of his control. All he could control was the performance. Um, he just, his dream was to put it all together when he was the most frightened. And, um, so it, I, my analogy was like going to war, you know, that, that, you know, you're, you're, I mean, in a romantic sense, not in, in a real sense, but in the romantic notion of a man in uniform and how your, your external is, um, is, is shielded, but the, the, the heart within is filled with fear and question and insecurity and all of that stuff, but that, you know, you, you count on that inner core strength beneath the, like there's sort of layers, right? Of where you're, you're, you're frightened um, and insecure, but that underneath you still, I think you all have, you know, you still believe in yourself. So you've got these layers that you go, you know, like two little angels on your shoulder. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. No, I can't. You know, which one are you going to listen to today? Joys of being um, human. Pardon? Yeah. I said the joys of being human. <laughs> exactly. And the joys of being an athlete and a competitor and, you know, putting yourself on the line in that moment. So those were all the things I was trying to capture with Napoleon. Um, but it's hard to articulate because it's also, at least, you know, it's for me, it, it's thought through, it's a thought process, but it's also very instinctual too. I just sort of read it in him and then try and translate it in movement somehow I, honesty I love, it's yeah, looking I, for honesty i i oh. love hearing your process and everything and just listening to you talk i just wanted to say that also what i was watching uh because i was watching um brian's program uh yesterday uh seeing you on the kiss and cry your hair was just always late it's always just great <laughs> it's just always amazing um uh, there's a picture in, there was a Sports Illustrated spread and Brian had posted the cover of it. Um, I mean, a male figure skater on Sports Illustrated was really amazing. But there's this whole fabulous spread and there's a picture of me and, and in it. And it's, I, I still, like, I love this picture. <laughs> but I know exactly how I was feeling in that moment because um, I was so nervous for Brian and I'm trying to, you know, be cool. And Brian just texted me because it was just his anniversary and we were texting back and forth 
I had sent my, the picture to my son because it, I don't think he'd ever seen it. But Brian was wondering if my son had ever seen the video of the performance. I don't like if you look at the triple flip, triple toe loop um, at about the three and a half minute mark. Um, there's somebody jumping up and down <laughs> on the landing of the triple toe in the shot. And that's me <laughs> being very uncool <laughs> and slowly losing it as he's like, you know, nailing everything. <laughs> Brian cracks up every time he sees that because we, I mean, the whole thing um, was choreographed in terms of where I was going to stand, who was going to, you know, I wasn't going to talk to Brian at all um, during warm up or anything like that. I was standing back. He wanted to be able to see me, but he, but Brian didn't need to speak to me. I mean, you know, that was not necessary. And he and Linda um, basically, you know, had telepathy. So they didn't speak either, but she was standing at the boards, you know, with the Kleenex and the guards and I was standing back and to the right. We had it all figured out. So, Anyway, that was 88. <laughs> and he was, he was unbelievable. Well, it's so amazing to hear you recount these iconic stories in our, in our sports history, you know, and like you said, our sport has gone through some incredibly yeah. large changes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on where the sport is heading? And where we're at right now? I mean, even amidst this pandemic and with the Olympics next year, what are your thoughts on figure skating today? Oh, gosh. Sorry. I <laughs> admire the technical progress. I mean, it just, and some of the, I mean, the quality too of some of the jump is just blow, blows my mind. Um, I, it's really changed. I mean, I, Oh my goodness. I mean, if you got another hour, really, it's so, it, I don't want to be, I think, I think what's happening though is figure skating had this visceral connection with the audience. I mean, it was, it was so many things. It could be so many things, sport and art and entertainment and in, incredible technique and, and, you know, incredible, incredible passionate moments of connection and it could be any body type as well it, you could be scott hamilton and you could be robin cousins and you could be kurt and you could be um you know katarina and liz manley and and debbie thomas and 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 uh, it didn't whatever you were you could find um a voice and i feel now that because so much is put on the, the technical side of it and, you know, the quads and the, the rotating, 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 is that the type is narrowing. You know, it's becoming like gymnastics where you have to be built a certain way. And that is heartbreaking to me because you, we will lose great artists and great contributors to the sport. We are always attached to the performance that makes us feel something. I mean, when you, when you think of those moments, those great moments, it's because of what you felt when you watched them. It's not because you were only blown away by t the technical aspect. And that feeling only comes from authenticity. And authenticity comes from individuality and uniqueness. And so I hope that there's a push for more individuality. I hope that skaters push back and own their individuality in all their different ways and just kind of push back instead of playing the game, you know, okay, I just do this for check marks. I just do this for points. But there needs to be a certain maturity to do that and a maturity from, from coaches too you know, to teach them to be well-rounded and not everybody's going to make it competitively. So if you want a career in figure skating as a performer or something else, then, you know, you have to be allowed to explore that. I think it happens in the dance event, 
more maybe, you know, where there's more of an exploration, I don't know, but it's still, as long as it, there's cookie cutters, then, you know, it just becomes less and less interesting for the public. And we need that. We need that dance with the public to make our sport um, survive, really, you know, because then it becomes, you know, the popularity is important. We're losing popularity. We're becoming so insular. So, you know, it's up to you guys to just keep pushing out and figuring out different ways of, of reaching and whether that's, um, you know, skating on lakes and posting it and getting attention and just to the passion of what, the, of the potential. Mm. There's so much potential.